complement capital fisheries, that is to engage in fish culture. Uh, as you can see, capital fisheries is dwindling. It's dwindling seriously, dwindling in the sense that uh, fishing, fishing, fishing technology has improved significantly. Technology has gone to a point that uh, fish anywhere in waters are not safe, have no hideout because of the sophistication of technolo technology. Some uh, improved fishing equipment now can spot fish wherever they are. Coupled with the impact of climate change has made the limited fisheries resources availability globally quite limited. As a result, capital fisheries has faced numerous, numerous challenges. It has now called for alternative measures to support capital fisheries because it's not sustainable. The resources are dwindling and the technology in fishing has improved. Uh, changes in climate and climate patterns also affect the fisheries sector. As a result, alternative ways of uh, uh, supplementing capture fisheries has to come to play. This is why countries like China, most Asian countries have gone far in developing their aquaculture sectors. China, as we speak, contribute over 60% of the global aquaculture production. That shows that they are doing extremely well, but they have invested also heavily in aquaculture development. It is here that we, we live on dead fish. You go to China, you go to the markets in China, you see live fish. The Chinese, they live on live fish because they have improved the aquaculture sector. As a result, you go to the markets, you want to buy fish, you buy live fish. It's only those of the students and who are more or less foreigners who go to their supermarkets to, to buy mackerel from supermarkets. But the real Chinese buy the live fish because there is live fish in China all throughout as a result of aquaculture. So coming back to Gambia, Gambia is no exception to improve our culture of fisheries, to supplement capture fisheries, to reduce pressure on our limited resources, to allow them to rejuvenate, to reproduce significantly for generations yet on board. So we have to embark on capture fisheries to complement, uh, embark on uh, cultural fisheries to complement uh, the gaps created by uh, capture fisheries. So in that uh, we have to culture fish and in culturing fish it doesn't limit to fin fish. When people hear aquaculture usually the focus goes on fin fish. Example tilapia and, and other related like mullets and the like. No, it goes beyond that. Aquaculture is too broad. It covers wide spectrum of, 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 of marine life that are culturable, even seaweed. Uh, all culturable uh, aquaculture <coughs> candidates that could be cultured for people to benefit from. Aquaculture, as we speak, in the country, the focus was on fin fisheries. So, selfish fisheries industry have not uh, received much desired attention it requires. And self fisheries in the country also help, helps uh, those uh, OS harvesters 
like the Tri Oyster Association, the women they go into mangroves in engaging or embarking on wild harvesting of, of, of oysters. Uh, over the years, uh, uh, it has been discovered that the, the attempt to harvest wild oysters from mangroves cause some environmental challenges on mangrove vegetation because uh, uh, naturally human, human beings, we are selfish beings for the fact that we want to um, get more in the shortest possible time. When they go uh, harvesting oysters in mangroves, they, some of them, instead of detaching oysters from the mangrove roots, that may take time, obviously, if you want to individually detach oysters from mangrove <coughs> roots, it may take time. But if you cut the mangrove roots and put it in the boat, you can cut so much within a short span of time. So you have a time gain. So as a result, this practice results in man mangrove dieback. And the importance of mangrove in, in supporting fisheries sector cannot be overemphasized. We see mangroves as a reservoir, as a resource bank for fisheries resources. Because those marine lives do spawning in mangrove belts during spawning period. Even most of these marine uh, awesome species, uh, at the time of reproduction, they will come into the river tributaries and to produce and even um, care their young ones until such a time that they are able to withstand the high salinity of the ocean hmm, and the high tides or waves of the ocean. Then they will gradually graduate into the ocean water environment. So that shows that the importance of mangroves cannot be overemphasized. We can rightly say that without mangroves our fisheries will collapse entirely. So they need to be preserved, they need to be jealously guarded <coughs> against, against, against destruction. So in a nutshell, mangroves serve a multiple role in, in our environment. They also serve as windbreakers during windstorms, during rainy season, windstorms. Uh, most communities around the mangrove belt thank God to mangrove vegetation during windstorms has a limited impact on the community because of the mangrove belt. In the absence of mangrove belts, certain windstorms during rainy season or early rains could cause a devastating havoc on communities, because uh, in the absence of mangrove belt that serve as a windbreak, uh, it can cause it can cause great great destruction to the communities around the mangrove belt. So the importance of mangrove cannot be overemphasized. It is used as roofing material, local roofing roofing materials. It is used as firewood. It also serve as a vital spawning ground for various marine and freshwater species. So that's why aquaculture unit taught it prudent to expand our culture of fisheries, uh, different fish species to, to sell fisheries to support the oyster harvesters instead of uh, harvesting oysters from, from, from the wild they can be introduced to different cultural methods that they could adopt to better their lives and livelihoods. And the oyster women around the Kamalo area, the oyster harvesting has support them so much. This is where they earn their livelihoods. This is where they pay their children school fees. Hmm? It serves as a vital economic entity for them and their families. So it is prudent as a Department of Fisheries to support them in any way possible to introduce them to oyster culture, different methods of oyster culture like crafts and rats culture that they could use to establish oyster farms. 
this why this year in 2022 budget I, I, I put uh, six activities to introduce oyster culture in the North Bank region where most of the communities are yet to be introduced to the technology of growing or culturing oysters. Thank God we've identified six communities in Nyomis and we have conducted the training and also introduced the uh, raw culture techniques in culturing oysters. All the six communities are completed. They have their oyster farms now. They know how to culture oyster. Now uh, this will limit the trouble of getting into mangroves where you can come across with snakes, other wild animals, the dangers are uh, numerous that they could encounter. But with oyster farms, uh, I think their life is even more secure in, in, in harvesting oysters from their own farms. So this is uh, a step in the right direction to support the <coughs> cultural fisheries uh, sector in this country. And going into the importance and the significance of oyster, looking at its economic and health benefits cannot be overemphasized. Oyster is a filter feeder. Although in water, oyster feeds on whatever comes its way in the water. And this is why oyster environment needs cleanliness. It needs cleanliness because being a filter feeder, if the water is not clean, then the oyster itself will not be clean, will not be safe for consumption. This is why during our training we emphasize, we keep emphasizing that uh, <coughs> sanitary issues need to be put into consideration. Open defecation of either sorry to say fishermen or oyster harvesters around the oyster belt should be discouraged. The, the riverine areas should be clean always to avoid the water pollution because once water is polluted then the oyster is polluted. Those are the health concerns regarding oysters. But uh, besides that, it has a significant health benefits that women and their families drive in terms of nutritional support. It's good for lactating mothers. It's good for, oh, for, for women at reproductive age, likewise men. Oh, its health benefits cannot be overemphasized. Looking at its economic benefits, it's enormous. Uh, oysters, a small cup of oyster, imagine, just a small cup will have a small cup of oysters will be sold at $60, in some cases $70. That equivalent in fin fisheries <laughs> cannot even earn you $50. I cannot even earn you $25 or $10. So oyster has so much economic value that it needs to be promoted. It needs, uh, culture needs to be encouraged by the government, by the Department of Fisheries to expand this oyster uh, production, oyster culture into regions where it has not been introduced. Looking at this economic value, hmm? Is, 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 is an important delicacy for, for, for tourists at the hotel industries. The tourists like oysters, oyster meat. So self-fisheries development, self-fisheries culture should be nurtured, should be encouraged, should be promoted in the country. One, it will uh, increase uh, even state revenue because at the current uh, project uh, coordinated by FAO, Fisheries Project, called uh, um, ACP, has come to develop the oyster value chain. This oyster value chain development will require the project to put up uh, oyster, uh, waiting seed for oyster harvesters. After harvesting oysters, they could use the seed to decorticate the oyster meat from the cells. And the project also is required to put proper sanitary structures along the oyster growing beds, banks, 
in, in the North Bank, in the South Bank, where oyster is, is grown, so that uh, women from oyster harvesting can 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 wash themselves properly before even they embark on on getting the meat out of out of sales. So the sanitary aspect of it is important. This will help. Uh, uh, oyster value chain development up to international markets. It could help our oysters to be sold in, at the international markets. And this will bring the much needed uh, foreign revenue, foreign revenue to propel our economy, to improve our economy. This is what the government needs. So it needs to be improved, it needs to be encouraged. Uh, having said that, namely you have Ma Madina Kanuma, you have Nyomi Meme, you have Same Koto Same Tenna, you have uh, Tabanana, sorry, Tamana, Yokadu Tamana, you have Yokadu Baka. Uh, all these is communities that I have mentioned. Each of these communities, the amount of money involved in the payments of the participants allowance, uh, the resource person and the support staff plus the materials that are purchased to be able to put these structures in place. The total money involved is close to 1.7 million dollars for these six communities combined. So looking at that, but the beauty in investing in oyster culture, the material that is used as a sculpture substrate is, is bamboo. Bamboo can last in salt water for, 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 for several years, can go beyond five years. So meaning these oyster farms are here to stay for several years. Once an oyster farm is established for a group or for a community, it's not a one-off one farm, but rather it can serve them for several years. It's a matter of detaching the string, strings of oysters, getting oysters meat and replace back those things to the farm, then the production and productivity continue. So if you look at it, the total uh, oyster farms established ever since we started these oyster culture activities, both in the South Bank and the North Bank, includes uh, communities like Joshua, we have an oyster farm in Joshua, we have oyster farm in Fajikunda, we have oyster farm in Abuko, we have oyster farm in Block. Uh, we also have six oyster farms, that, like I mentioned, in the North Bank. And even Kato oyster farm was established there. So looking at all the combination of all these farms put in together, it's in hectares, hectares, hectares of farm that is will stay for, for a number of years, probably beyond five years. It's a matter of changing the strings, hmm? replacing the strings with oyster cells for oyster sparks to grow again. And harvesting and replacement, harvesting and replacement. So it's a sustainable and economic venture for, 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 for the lives and livelihoods of, of, of oyster growing communities. It's, we are going to be, it's going to be quite ungrateful on our side as an uh, uh, aquaculture unit and as the Department of Fisheries and even ministry alike. If I don't, as a unity, thank the Minister of Finance, and the Minister, the Commerce Section, and the Ministry of Finance. God's sake and Jaya, and even the focal person, Jaya and I begin to who have endlessly <coughs> made it possible to receive support to venture into this very, very useful and important economic activity that we support. And the support we receive from them do not end in oyster culture. Yes, uh, I said earlier on, you have both field fisheries and, 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 and cell fisheries. Part of that funds are also utilized to embark on wheat production of, uh, fish and production of catfish, because catfish do not produce any captivity. 
have the main catfish reproduced through artificial means. So a good sum of money is used to purchase the equipment materials required for that reproduction and process. And very soon the team will be described to the hatchery at Sapo to embark on the three months trial for the reproduction of catfish. This will make aquaculture seed that is the fingerlings of catfish available for wider farmers in the field and also even support the hunting in the production efforts. So I thank the Minister of Finance in providing uh, the much needed funds to implement the spending activities and also thank my honorable minister, Mr. Musa Jagi, for being in the forefront in mobilizing funds from the Minister of Finance to make sure that agriculture in the US are fruitful. And the permanent secretary, both the former and the current, the former Minister of Antigua and the current Madam Rohika, for their support. And all other team players at the Ministry. Coming back to my department, my own director, Madam Anna Blanca Chan and my colleagues, Mr. Sidney, and the rest of the staff offices for their moral support.